Hi everyone, as you know, version 2.0 of Hitbook Commerce Ajax Search is here. We can almost say it's a completely new plugin because it has been redesigned with the high performance search engine to show your users their results immediately. You are also going to find options to customize the search forms in the settings in the shortcode or in the Gutenberg block. In this video, we'll show you how to configure the plugin and how the search form works, but before, let me remind you that we'll list the links to the plugin, documentation, and live demo description below so you can go ahead and check it out. And now, let's get to it. Once Yeet WooCommerce Ajax Search 2.0 is activated, we can go to Yeet Ajax Search. We'll find this dashboard with all these sections. And the first section we need to visit is Search Fields. This is where we need to configure the search fields that the search engine will use when a search is performed in the shop. We have product name right here. If we click here, we're going to see we have several other fields to choose from. And here we have the priority, which is one. Now let's add another field so that the engine searches in more than just a product name. We can leave description selected, priority two. And we can add another field for example, these two are grayed out because they are already added above, but we have short description, SKU, product categories, tags, attributes, and custom fields. Let's add product attributes. And here we can set the product attributes that we have created on the site and that we want the search engine to search on. For example, color. Save options. There, options saved. So this way, the search engine will use product names first, description second, and the color product attribute in the third place when a search is performed on the shop. So now that we're done configuring the fields, we have an important section below, search index. This has been added to the plugin to have an even more efficient search engine and fast results. So basically this helps users quickly find the information and the products they're looking for. It is designed to map search queries to documents or URLs that might appear in the results. Let me take a moment here to remind you to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell down below so you know every time we have a new video for you. Now, let's continue with the video. So, we have the option to schedule indexing here, so it is done recurringly. And then the index that is here with an option to reveal the index. Right now, my shop data is not indexed. So I need to click here to start the process. I'm going to click on Reveal the Index. There we go. So the process has started and done. Okay, great. So it has been built successfully. The items in my store are 100% indexed. You have the date here. And if we enable this option, we're going to be able to choose when we want to schedule indexing. It can be weekly or daily. If we say daily, for example, we can schedule the time. So we can say every day at 1 a.m. You can, of course, choose the best interval for your store. If you start the process manually by clicking here, or if you schedule it, it can be simply done in the background. We can continue working on the site. No need to stay here for that. And let's save options. Okay, so now that we have configured this first very important section, we can go to general options or we're going to find the settings to configure the general options for the plugin behavior. We have four sections here, autocomplete, search results, suggested and trending searches, and fast strings and synonyms. In the autocomplete section, we're going to be able to enable the autocomplete feature in the search form. So this is basically an option to enable a list of suggested results automatically generated based on what the user types in the search form. And the minimum number of characters to trigger this autocomplete feature can be set here. I have three characters here. So let's go see that in action. So here I have my search form. Let's say I enter H and nothing shows up, O and nothing shows up, and then the third letter O again, and that's when I get results because we need a minimum of three characters to use this autocomplete feature and suggest results. So again, the search engine will not search for any related or suggested results unless I type at least three letters. Back to the dashboard. Okay, and then we have search results. We have an option to show variations as separate products and an option to hide out of stock products. So these two options together are useful in case you don't want users to see products that have a variation that's out of stock. So if you show variations as separate products, 
and hide out of stock products at the same time, users will not get as a result a variation that's out of stock. Then here we have suggested and trending searches. We have two options here, specific keywords and popular searches. So the one selected right now is popular searches. Let's go to the site again to show you how this works. Okay, I'm going to complete the keyword here, hoodie, and I'm going to click on this product from the results I got. And this will count as a visit to a result I got in the search form. I'm going to go back to the shop and by clicking on the search form, before I type anything, I see my latest searches, so I just looked for hoodie, and then trending searches, which are basically what we have configured in that section we just saw. We have popular searches, so what we're going to see here are the keywords that users type in and then click on the results, so they're the keywords that get the most visited results. Let's go back to the dashboard. Alternatively, we can choose specific keywords instead of popular searches. What we can do with this is basically suggest specific keywords to users. In this case, we have these examples, iPhone 11, Air Max 1, vintage dress with buttons. Let's try a couple of keywords here. For example, logo. If I want to add more keywords, I need to separate each keyword with a comma and t-shirt. So let's do logo and t-shirt. Save options. Back to the site. I'm going to refresh. Okay, now if I click here below trending, I have the keywords that I have just entered, logo and t-shirt. So these are my own suggestions that I'm showing to customers as trending searches. This is shown before users start typing. Once they start typing, they're not going to see this. This is a great way to suggest products to customers in a not so direct way. Now let's go back and let's scroll down and we have the last section which is fuzzy strings and synonyms so the first option is to enable fuzzy strings matching let's enable it with fuzzy string matching users will be able to find relevant results even when the word they type in is misspelled the default fuzzy matching level is 50 percent this is the recommended percentage a higher percentage like a hundred percent can give a lot of false positives so a lot of false results are not really relevant or related to the word the user was trying to search. We can, for example, make it less than 50%, like 25%, save options, back to the site, refresh, and since it's 25%, if instead of HOO for hoodie, I type HOD, I don't get results. You see, I see zero results for hood. Back to the dashboard. So again, it's not recommended to have a 100% level. The suggested value is 50%. And last, we have synonyms. Here, what we can do is include in each field a list of synonyms or concepts to help users easily find the products they're looking for in case they typed in a different name. Each word or phrase has to be separated by commas. And here we have a great example. Pregnancy, maternity, nursing, and motherhood, and postpartum all of these are synonyms in case users type in a word that's different to what we're using to name our products for the description or for any other field that the search engine will use to search. Okay, so now that we have seen general options and search fields, let's go to search shortcodes. Here's where we will find, create, and edit shortcodes to insert the search form on the site. So each shortcode that is created here includes the search form and the settings to customize it. This is a great update we got in this new version 2.0 to customize the search forms directly with settings here or in the Gutenberg block instead of needing to edit the template or add code. Here I get an option to add a new shortcode. You can of course add as many shortcodes as you want to and copy them here to paste on your site. You can click here to edit the preset, to delete it or to duplicate it. Let's delete this one. Are you sure? Yes, I want to proceed. And what we're going to do is edit this existing preset. I'm going to click here on edit. We have the settings divided into five different tabs. In the general tab, we have the name of the shortcode. This is for you to be able to recognize the shortcode. We have the layout, which can be small or large. And we have a CSS class field here. This is in case you need to enter additional CSS classes to customize this search form. Then in search input, we have the placeholder for the search form. Right now is search for products. 
we have the border size, the border radius. This is what makes the form have a rounded style. Then we have the colors. In submit button, we can choose the submit button style. Right now it's icon. Let me show you. Here it is. We have an icon. Let's go back. You can choose to have a text instead and you can enter the text here. You can choose to have an icon and text, but let's just leave the icon selected. You can choose the position left or right and we can choose the button colors. Then in search results, we can choose how many maximum results to show. Right now it's five. What product information to show with the results? You can show the title, the price, the SKU, the add to cart button, the product image, the stock, the summary, and the categories. You have the title color. You can choose the results layout here. Right now it's list. Let's go back to see that. Let's look for hoodie again. So this is list. We have one product below the other. Back. Let's change it and make it a grid layout instead. Save. Back. Refresh. And let's click here. Let's look for hoodie again. And this is the grid layout. We have one result next to the other. Not below as in a list. Back. Okay, let's expand this again and we were in the search results tab. Let's see. We can also choose the image size in pixels, the price label, what to show when there are no results. Here we have no results. Try with a different keyword. We can choose to show a view all results link. Here we have set five maximum results to show. In case there are more results than those five that are displayed, we can show this link so customers can click on it and see all of the results and not just the first five. We have badges to show, on sale, out of stock and feature. We can choose to hide the feature badge if the product is on sale and we can choose to extend the search to posts and pages. And last we have extra options. Here we get to choose to show the last searches. We saw that minutes ago. I performed the search and then I was able to see the history of my last searches. Maximum searches to show right now is three. The label latest searches. You can of course edit this anytime. If we want to show trending searches or not, maximum number to show the label. If we want to show related categories or not, maximum categories to show and the label. And that's it. Let's save this. As you can see, there are more than enough options to customize the search form here. And then let's move on to customization. Here we can choose the colors of the sale badge, the out of stock badge, the feature badge, and the related content background. These options are very simple and intuitive, so we can move on. Okay, so now we have seen how to customize the search shortcodes. Using the shortcodes is super easy. You just copy them and paste them anywhere on your site to add the search form. What we're going to see now is how to use a Gutenberg block instead of the shortcode to add the search form to the site. We're going to go to pages and we're going to create a new page, add new. Okay, so we're going to click on add block and we're going to search for Ajax. We get two results. We get Ajax search, which is a deprecated block that was used in the previous version of this plugin. And we have classic search, which is the one that we have to use now, which is the new and updated block. We cannot do any page on the side. I'm going to select this one. Okay, so here I have the block and now I can click here to see the block structure and configure it. We can expand here. And we're going to find three divisions. We have input block, field state block, and empty state block. If I select input block and the block is selected, I'm going to see here to the right all of the options to configure the block. This is the block that manages the search field. So we get all the options here to the right to customize the search form, just like any Gutenberg block. This way we can edit all these sections in an advanced way. Let me select classic search again. And the option we have here when we select classic search, which is the classic search block, is to choose the size, which can be small or large. And we can add additional DSS classes here. Let's select input block again. Okay, so the options we have are the placeholder, we can change that. Right now we cannot see the placeholder because this block already has a keyword entered. We can change the border size like this, for example. Uh, we can change the border radius like this, make it more rounded or not. 
We can change the color settings for the placeholder, text, background, background focus, border, border focus. We can also choose here if we want to have an icon as a submit button, text, there we go, or icon plus text. Let's just select icon and we can choose the position on the right, on the left and the submit colors, the icon, icon hover, background, background hover, border and border hover. We have two more sections here, field state block and empty state block. The field state block is visible when a keyword has been entered and there are results and the empty state block is shown when the search form is clicked on. The user hasn't typed a keyword yet and there are no results. You might have noticed that we have two brackets here, which means we can expand these sections. I'm going to expand this one, field state block, and we see that it contains three blocks and a separator. Let's click on it so we can see that. There we go. So this is what we see. Good. This is what the user would see after results are found. If I click on related categories block, I see that this block is selected, okay? So this is the content of this division, the field state block. Here I can enter a label and the max related categories to show. Right now I'm seeing three, but perhaps I can add four, five, six or more. If I select this one, I see it's a separator right here, separating this block and this one. The product results block is the one that shows the found products. I have a lot of customization options here. I have the maximum results to show, the layout, grid or list, if we want to show the name of the products or not, the product title color, if we want to show the price, the label of the price, the image, the image position, left or right, the image size, if we want to show the categories, the stock, the SKU summary or add to cart button, the text to show when there are no results, whether to show the view all results link. If I enable this and scroll down, you see it's here, see all products and it shows the total number. Let's disable this. We can choose to show the on sale batch, out of stock batch or feature batch and hide the feature batch if the product is on sale and here the advanced section to add additional CSS classes. And then we have the related posts block. This shows the related posts or pages. We get to choose the label, which we can see here. If the related results are posts or pages, the maximum related posts to show and the background color. And since this contains blocks, we can actually add blocks that are not really included in the classic search block. For example, I can just click here and I can add an image. I can add any image I want to and you can keep adding any Gutenberg blocks. For example, this image block is super useful in case you want to show banners if you're running a special sale or for Black Friday. So it's a good place to add an image to show to users when they're looking for products they're interested in. But let's delete it. And now let's click on empty state block and expand it. We have latest searches and trending. So if I click on search history, we see that this is the block that is selected, the latest searches. Here we have the settings to edit the label and the max items to show. And then we have the popular searches block, which is this trending section where we can choose the label, the maximum number of popular searches to show. And of course, add any good number of blocks we want to here. But of course, keep in mind that the blocks you add here to this empty state block are only going to be shown when users click on the search form. As soon as they start typing, this is not going to be visible, okay? So now that we have seen how to configure the Gutenberg block, we're going to show you how you can add this block to the header of your store. So let's go back to the dashboard, to Appearance, Widgets, and we're going to look, for example, for this header widget area. And we're just going to click on Add, and we're going to add the classic search. There we go. So again, just like we saw before, if we want to configure the block, we just have to make sure it's selected and click here and we can expand to see the three divisions and click on each of them to configure all the options we have just seen. And that's it. That's how easy it is to configure the plugin to start using this great search engine in your shop. Okay, so that's how the plugin works. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and we'll meet again for our next video.